Hello YouTube and welcome back to the garage. So uh, today's episode we're going to see about fitting the front wheel, getting that centred between the forks and uh, then moving on to what we're going to do for brakes and handlebars. So as I mentioned in the previous video, if you're doing this swap you do need the fire blade spindle. As you can see it's quite a bit longer than the uh, CB1 spindle and also I don't know if you can notice but the the actual spacers are a longer length so I'm kind of hoping that just a bit of mixing and matching we can get away with uh, using the stock parts although uh, purely because I've got a lathe I may actually make some nice spangly little aluminium spacers just because I can so talking of handlebars I did actually have a bit of a play and uh, I put the um, the fire blade clip-ons on to the top yoke just to see what it looks like so let me spin you around here you are you can see i've uh, i put the fire blade clip-ons on and uh, yeah realistically they're they're going to be way too low but more worryingly is on full lock they're very very close to the tank i can barely get my hand down between the tank and the clip-on so so that's going to be a failure from an mot point of view and uh, really just is a bad idea all round. so for that reason I'm going to have to look at using handlebars. So I had a rummage around in the spares pile and I found this, let me zoom you out a bit, I found this pair of Renthal fat bars with some really quite nice Rizoma risers. So I think we're going to go with those, fit those on the top yoke, something like that. And uh, even that just clears the tank there but importantly where your hand's going to go there's plenty of room the only downside is of course i am going to have to drill the top yoke to suit and this riser does actually sit right over the little honda logo so uh, we may have to do something about that uh, probably just fill the honda logo with some weld machine it back down again to make it all smooth um, so yeah that's the the handlebar solution i'm going to go with quite like that. <clears throat> the other thing I did whilst we were mocking up the, uh, the front yokes is I fitted the ignition barrel. Again let's just zoom you in. And this is the, the stock CB1 ignition barrel and one of the advantages of using all Honda parts is it literally bolts straight up. Uh, the only downside is, is turning the handlebars, it just catches on this little metal, I don't know if you can see it, but there is actually um, a metal tab welded to the front of the frame just here, uh, which acts as your, your parking lock, um, and it just gets to about this far, and then it rubs, so I am going to have to just dress that back a little bit just to make some clearance um, well that's not a big deal and that's why we do the mock-up obviously to, to check out all this sort of stuff so let's zoom you back out again and uh, we will get on we're looking <laughs> okay now we're zoomed in I'm gonna gonna fit a front wheel now I've actually gone into the spare shed grabbed another wheel that hasn't got the tire on it because it just makes life so much easier to actually measure everything up. Uh, I've thrown another disc on just with a couple of bolts just to hold it square and uh, let's start with the, uh, the fire blade spacers fresh out straight out of the box as it were and uh, we'll get this front wheel in. At least we would if the spacer didn't decide to go over. Right.
Right, so that's our, our front wheel clamped up. And now I just need to measure the gap between the wheel and the fork leg on each side. So uh, I'm going to go old school. Got a, uh, a set of outside or inside calipers, old machinist calipers. And I'm just going to sit a bit of metal on here. Best to do it the other way around. Uh, just to keep everything square, so I'm probably going to get in the way of the camera here, but let's have a go. So believe it or not, just using the, the fire blade spacers and the spindle with the CB1 front wheel, that is within half a millimeter on either side, which I think we can say is well within factory tolerances. Um, I am just going to do another double check. Yep, that's pretty much bang on. So that's nice and easy. And this is one of the reasons I went for the uh, the Honda Fireblade front end is because Honda generally tend to stick to the same dimensions for most of their components. So for example, up here, I know that Honda have used the same size head bearings on all sorts of bikes since about the mid eighties, up until really sort of early two thousands. And it's the same with the um, the front wheel bearings. They've, they've been the same size on numerous bikes. So I knew the spindle would fit. So, and of course, the uh, ignition lock or the ignition uh, barrel. <coughs> um, again, same centers for the fittings. And let's be honest, as a manufacturer, why wouldn't you? Why would you stop loads of different size bearings for different front wheels when one size can be used on everything? So that's the front wheel in, turning nicely, all centred within the forks and uh, as I said, happy with that, that's a nice easy option. So let's have a look at what we're going to do for the front brake. <clears throat> well the obvious answer would be to go for a 98 to 99 Fireblade front caliper. But unfortunately I couldn't get my hands on one of those at the time, so what I've done is I've bought myself this is a four pot caliper off a Honda CB1300. Um, it was quite a bit cheaper than the Fireblade ones that were available at the time. Uh, although having said that, having looked on eBay recently, they're, they're all much of a muchness now. But I quite like that. So uh, the, the Honda CB1300 also runs a 310mm disc. So I kind of figured it would be a fairly safe bet. So I've just grabbed some Allen bolts. And uh, again, these aren't the ones I'm going to use for the final build, but they're certainly up to the job or for mocking everything up. So let's clamp the caliper on. It certainly looks about right, but let's just zoom you in a little bit more. Uh, 
and there it is I think that looks rather neat out and we'll see how true it's running with the brake. definitely going to need replacing you can see hopefully you can see where it's a bit worn in the middle try to hold this up so you can see it there we go so I'll be definitely ordering a new pair of pins but the whole caliper is going to get a refurb anyway so uh, I don't really see the point of chucking a, a caliper in with unknown provenance as it were bad start it looks like this disc is warped um, so, right we know the wheel is centered um, but looking in I can see the disc is waving from side to side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the original wheel back in um, and see if that's any better I mean it could be the caliper sitting on the piss but let me switch you off for a minute we'll come back and uh, have a have another look okay that's a lot better I can see that the, um, the disc on this this wheel is running a lot truer you could literally see the other one sort of wobbling from side to side and when I checked it with these these calipers if I put them just between the, the top mount and the disc itself it kept snagging and catching Whereas if we do the same with this wheel, it's fine. I'm getting no snagging at all. So back to refitting the camper. Like I said, would have been uh, the easiest option would have been to grab uh, a 9899 Fireblade four pot caliper, um, but this one came up slightly cheaper from a CB1300, so and I rather like it, and just hope it fits. So now we just need to measure. The gap on either side, again using our, our old school adjustable calipers. Which of course are snagging on the tyre. Just measure that. The other way of doing it is to, to grab a couple of drill bits and just put those in. Right, nine and a half just 
just about goes in at the back. And the 10 clears nicely. So that's good. If anything, I'm just going to need to put a little shim between the uh, caliper and the fork mount just to move it over to the side a little bit. The other thing I need to check, of course, is that the, the swept area on the, on the pads is correct. So I'm just going to reinsert the pads. Often easier said than done. Now I'm not going to worry about the, uh, the spring because all we're looking at is just in here, which of course you guys can't see. So, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Not sure how to do this other than move the camera completely. So, let's just get that tightened up and I will bring you in to uh, have a look. Okay, here we are in shaky cam mode with me holding the, uh, the camera and what we actually want to look for is to make sure that the, the top of the pad, when it's compressed in like that, is actually level with the outside of the disc, which this one more or less is. If it's not, you'll end up with a lip. And then down the bottom, again where my finger is, hopefully you can see that the bottom of the pad is in that swept area. So overall, this has got to be one of the easiest conversions I've ever done. The front wheel fitted straight in using the standard fire blade spacers, the CB1300 um, caliper just bolts straight on. Uh, so yes, and of course up the top here, the top yoke bolts in using the standard head bearings and there you are, you can see the ignition barrel all mounted in again. Just a straightforward swap everything lines up apart from as i said it just seems to rub let's move that out of the way and you can hopefully see this little bracket up here and it just catches on the very edge of it so again i'm just going to relieve that a little bit with a file or the angle grinder the only downside is of course the the fire blade clip-ons really don't work they're, they're just that bit too close um, now you could file off the locating lugs and pull them round but uh, i think they're going to be a bit too low to be properly comfortable so let me put the uh, the camera back on its mount and uh, we'll, we'll start looking at the, the rest of the braking system Right, so we sorted out the, the actual caliper we're going to use. And now what I need to sort out is what master cylinder I'm going to use. And I've got this nice little unit here that's off a CBR125. Now it may seem like a bit of a strange step going from using the master cylinder off a 400 to one off a little 125 whilst putting a bigger 4 pot caliper on. Now the logic behind it is this. The... CB1 uh, front master cylinder only has an 11 millimeter bore. Now, obviously, an 11 millimeter bore kind of it just about works on the the standard sliding two pot uh, caliper, and it's it's quite nice on the road. Gives you plenty of feel without being too too harsh. But I have found when I've done track days, you do kind of run out of brakes um, using the standard master cylinder. So the CBR125 has actually got a half inch bore and normally if you look on the bottom of the cylinders you will find it stamped just down here. Um, so this is actually, although it's off a smaller bike, it's got a bigger bore. It's a half inch bore, so 12.7 millimeters. And that should work really well with this four pot caliper because although we've gone from a sliding two pot caliper we're now moving four pistons rather than two what we're actually doing with those pistons is those pistons are actually only going to be moving about half the distance that the the two pistons in a sliding caliper have to move because obviously you're only closing up a small gap from both sides rather than sliding the caliper along to close up the bigger gap so i think this little cylinder this little master cylinder 
with a half inch bore should work quite well with this caliper. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a half inch, so 12.7. So it is quite a jump up from the 11 mil. Uh, the next uh, step would be to, to go to a, a 14 mil master cylinder. But I believe that a 14 mil master cylinder is what was used on the fire blade with both calipers. So I think that would probably be a bit too on off for this application. The only downside is I've just pulled this out of the box, pulled the lever in and the plunger has stuck in place. So it's definitely going to need a rebuild. But like I said, it has, along with the, uh, the fire blade front forks, it has been set in the garage here for a couple of years, waiting for me to get off my backside and actually build this project. So I'll be rebuilding that. And uh, as I said, it should work quite well. With these handlebars up here. I've also got a, uh, a braided hose. So uh, we're, we should all be good to go. So where does that leave us now? Okay, well I still need to sort out the front mug guard and I've taken a whole raft of measurements and doodles and excuse the scrappy writing so I now know what size clips I need to do and also I need to go and drill the top yoke to take the handlebar risers so quite simple they are just it is just a single M10 bolt that goes through each of the risers they're, they've got the round bottoms, so they actually sit quite nicely on the flat machine face of the, uh, the fire blade top yoke. The only problem is where I want to put them, it kind of obscures where the little Honda logo is at the top, which is recessed, which is not ideal, but I think what we can do is we could probably fill that up with uh, a bit of weld and then machine it flush after afterwards, so we can get around that. But yeah, the, uh, the fire blade clip-ons here, they're definitely going back on eBay. Don't need those at all. Although uh, the, the bar end weights are your standard Honda fare that is used on, on the CV ones and they always seem to go missing. Uh, in fact, I had one fly off as I was going through the Dartford Crossing uh, a couple of weeks back. So uh, yeah, thankfully it didn't hit the car behind, but uh, that could have been bad. So I'm gonna shut you off here and uh, we'll, we'll come back a bit later on in, in the workshop where I need to make up uh, a little jig from the mud god brackets so I'll see you in there soon. Hello YouTube, well here I am back in the workshop and I've been making quite a bit of swarf and mess but I've done a couple of little jobs that uh, should make life a bit easier with sorting out the bike. So the first job I did was I turned down a bit of scrap bar and marked the centre of it. That then meant I could take the top yoke, slide it over, and I've now got the centre line of where the, uh, where the stem of the yoke goes. And using good old fashioned compasses and pencil, I was able to mark out where I wanted the, the holes drilling for the yokes. Um, I managed to actually avoid the, the Honda logo here by bringing them in a bit more than I wanted to. Uh, you can see if I just roughly position them. They're a little bit closer than I would have liked. Let's zoom you in. So there they are. Um, like I said, they're a bit closer than I would have liked because I had to avoid the Honda logo. But the nice thing with these particular risers is as you can see they're they're not symmetrical here we go so it may not show on the camera but they're slightly offset in this direction which brings the handlebars back more in line with the, the stem of the yoke so all i've got to do on these is just uh, center punch my marks and drill them uh, to take the m10 bolts the the underside of the yoke is fairly flat in that point I might need to just make up some little spaces, but uh, yeah, they, they should fit quite nicely. And uh, so that's that job jobbed. My only concern is I might be a bit close to this, but uh, there's only one way to find out. So 
so that's the yolk done and then the next job I did is I've started making up this little thing and the idea is it's going to enable me to to bend up some strips of aluminium and mug guard brackets so, so I've cut down some strips of aluminium now these aren't going to be the, the final brackets they're really just here for me to do a test so the idea is you put the aluminium in between these two points and then I can bend it round add this other part And then finally, I've got this piece of angle iron, which should just enable me to square everything off. So the aluminium I'm actually using is two and a half mil thick, so it should be plenty thick enough. The only problem is I measured the where where the brackets sit on the forks, and there's only a, a 12 mil deep recess for it to sit in. So I don't think 12 mil thick brackets are really going to be man enough, but that's fine because I think. But as it stands at the moment, the mud guard is going to sit a bit high, so I'm going to make some thicker brackets and then machine this bit down to 12 mil and have 20 mil for the rest of the bracket. But like I said, until we actually get round to fitting it, I won't know. So, like I said, this is really just to prove that it will work. I've also marked out some holes that correspond with the holes in the mug guard. Uh, so I'm going to drill through here, drill them out to 6mm and then cut everything down to suit. So, let me go and get the drill, which I've actually left indoors. Uh, we'll drill the holes and then I will take the, the finished bracket out. We'll have a look at it and uh, then go and try it on the bike. So you wouldn't believe that short bit of video talking about the, the bit of metal for the stem and making up this has pretty much taken all day. Um, but hopefully it'll all be worth it. So yes, give me a few minutes. I'll drill some holes, bend the other one, and then I'll show you the, the finished article. Okay, I've got the drill. So hopefully it should just be a case. And obviously these will get opened out to six mil.
and there we have the finished bracket obviously I just need to like I said trim them down here and here radius the edges and hopefully when that's applied that should all close up and clamp around the fork leg quite nicely so I shall get on with the other one and uh, like I said we'll uh, move into the garage in a little while and uh, do a bit of test fitting see if it works okay so it took a bit of faffing and it may look like the mug guards on um, but in actual fact it's not I managed to get the bracket on this side on uh, but the the actual mug guard itself is too far over to the left so I obviously got my dimensions a little bit out somewhere which is annoying um, but also um, it's, it's kind of proved that the idea works it just needs a bit of finessing um, the the biggest problem though however if we just come back out a little bit and uh, you can see there is a hideous huge gap between the tyre and the mug guard uh, there you are that's probably the best view it really doesn't look right I mean, there's a massive one there now obviously you do need some clearance between the the tyre and the mug guard but nowhere near that much that just looks all wrong to me so uh, yeah not a complete success but i'm not taking it as a total failure it's it's proved that the the concept works um and i'm on the right lines in principle but uh, yeah i'm just gonna have to go away finesse it but that's always the case when you're trying to make uh, these custom parts so rather than uh, carry on uh, with the video i'm gonna say uh, thank you all for watching and uh, take care of yourselves and i'll see you in the next video hopefully with a mark ii version of the uh, mud guard stays that lowers the the mud guard down a little bit and brings it over this way a bit so till then thanks a lot